Hello, it's Nikki. How are you doing? How's your week been? I've really enjoyed being outside, bizarrely, on one of the hottest weeks of the year. Um, but I realised since moving to this house, I haven't used my garden as much as I thought I would. And I've really been enjoying doing some yoga out there. Um, and I've recorded a couple of videos there this week. I mean, I love putting washing on the line. That is just a delight. And we've got three washing lines here and we use them all, all the time. And uh, yeah, anyway, life admin stuff, which is boring. So I will crack on to today's bundle. First up, I have Kay Fabella for you, who is based in Spain, but she's originally from America. And she's the story finder. She really shares some great insights about being a personal brand and getting things off the ground. Followed by Nick Pigeon, who is a success coach. Um, she's really a leader in the coaching world. And I know so many people who have worked for, with her, but her projection, her trajectory uh, has been quite speedy, actually, in terms of the success that she's been able to bring. So I hope you get lots of inspiration from that episode. Then I have Indra Ove, who is an actor and also a friend of mine. Earlier in the week, I went to see, with my mum, I went to see her in Jerusalem in the West End. And wow, I was just completely blown away. So if you ever get the opportunity to see the play, do it, do it, do it, do it. Um, I felt like I witnessed a slice of history. And finally, if writing a book is on your vision board, your bucket list. Um, Jessica Killingly is the person to take it off that vision board and bucket list and make it a reality and get you moving and shaking and a plan because she's a publishing coach and a consultant. And she is really somebody who is all about making those dreams tangible and bringing you into action. I think writing a book for so many of us is one of those one day, when I have time, when I have inspiration, etc. So if this is something that you're really serious about, you're going to want to listen to this episode. All right, that's it for now. As always, you can visit my shop, nikkiraby.com forward slash shop, where you will share, uh, well, you will find rather all of my offerings, how I can support you, how I can help you. I also have a brand new interview episode for you, which is a whole, um, like a long uh, version of this. So uh, I won't share who it is just yet, but look out for it. Make sure you're subscribed because then you will be the first to hear it. All right. Lots of love. Have a great day and I'll speak to you very soon. Bye. Come look at this. Like I, I was missing that in my business and, you know, one conversation led to another and led to another. And we started Brand in a Bottle last year. So her is the web designer, me as the storyteller and copywriter, and our third friend, who's uh, Nere, who's a graphic designer. And we take you through a whole process where we create a story-driven brand and website. So I continue to serve my audience, but at the same time, I can still operate for my personal brand if you come to me for just the story. And so it's been this lovely evolution that hasn't you know, there's that graphic online of what you think success looks like, and it looks like a straight line and what success actually looks like. And it's basically a spaghetti noodle. <laughs> like I'm a spaghetti noodle <laughs> yeah. in my journey of getting here. But, you know, along the way, it really just came down to how do I step back every so often and make sure is this business aligned with who I am? Is this business aligned with the people that I want to serve? And how do I adjust accordingly? Oh, I'd love to talk more about that in terms of how do you know, I guess, if, if something is right for you and aligned with you. Um, the reason I'm asking is because if you are in this um, personal brand space, I guess, where there are no rules or there isn't, a, so you do this and then you do this, it is that sort of spaghetti on a plate moment. Sometimes <laughs> we can get that um, shiny object syndrome of like, oh, that could be good or maybe that's a good opportunity. How do you know what to choose and how do you know how to move forward? So... It's actually a mentor of mine said this uh, a really long time ago, but she said, 
It's about the energy that you bring to things. Mm. If I feel myself pushing more than pulling, if I feel something is heavy and not light, that's when I know I need to either let it go or step back. Right. And, and I think that's a hugely powerful thing that we forget is that we are running this business or creating it because we want it to to fit into our lives and to complement who we are. Yes. And give our truest selves to it. And if none of those three things are in place, then that's when we have to remember, oh, wait, I can change things. I can pivot. I can adjust or tweak or walk away from it entirely, whatever that, whatever that looks like for you. But you're ultimately the person in control of it. And it's easy to lose sight of that. But I think it comes down to your energy and checking in with yourself once in a while. Absolutely. And I know everybody says it, but it's because it's true. Yeah. And if I look at what I've learned over the years, it's always been from those people that have either been there and done it before, or somebody that's an expert in an area that I want to learn from. Like if you look at the whole pattern of our lives, we go to school and we learn from other people that know more than us. Yes. So why should it be any different in business? So I invested, I mean, I invested in a course first of all, and then I invested in working one-on-one with a coach. And when I invested in working with that one-on-one coach, I literally invested everything that I had. So it wasn't an easy decision, but it was something that I knew was absolutely right. And how did you know that that was non-negotiable for you? Because I I, th- I see it a lot with my clients or, or sometimes I have conversations with people for a couple of months back and forth and you can tell that they're, they're ready to make that leap and yet there's something that's holding them back or maybe they're not sure uh, what it's going to entail. How did you know that that was the right time for you to step into that? Okay, this is going to be a bit of a strange answer, but at the time, (laughs) I literally had invested in one course already, which was, I think it was around about $3,000 for an online course, and my assistant and I had literally sat and worked away and put everything into place, launched this program that we'd built based on that course, and the program was a group training program, and it sold one place. Now, that is not a group. Everybody knows that one person is not a group. So I went into panic mode because at this particular time, I had moved out of my apartment in Newcastle. I'd said goodbye to my friends and family, and I'd moved to the other side of the world. So I'd gone to Australia to write my first book, and at this particular time, I was in New Zealand. And I was steadily burning through the savings that I'd taken on the premise that this group program was going to work. So... When I was kind of in this place and space of having this one person signed up to my group program, I went to doing the things that I really know how to do best, which is applying the principles of positive psychology and positive mindset to actually help me find a solution. So I was listening to loads of positive podcasts. I was meditating. And in one particular meditation, I was saying, please help me find guidance. Show me a solution show me a sign. And I literally came out of that meditation. I looked at my mobile phone and I had one notification and it was a Facebook notification from somebody that I'd never met, never even heard of. And she was reaching out to me because she'd seen what I'd been doing with my business. And she wanted to basically be my coach. So because it was such a sure sign, that's the person that I signed up with. Brilliant. And it was just right place, right time. Thank you very much. Mm, Off we go. Totally. Absolutely. And and has your capacity for what is possible changed or has your vision changed or has it sort of remained the same? Did you you know that this was going to happen? I knew that this was always what I wanted to happen and I was prepared to do the work to actually make it happen. So the work, yes, it's the strategy and it's taking action every day in your business. It's also the inner work. So I would literally, and I still do now, do a ritual every morning. I would meditate. I would listen to abundance meditations. I would write affirmations. So I was doing all of this stuff to really shift my psychology. Now, I've always had a big vision and 
I know that we can always accomplish whatever it is we want to accomplish and probably even more. And I think one of the, the biggest and most important things that we need to learn as, yes, as entrepreneurs, but also as people, is to think long term and not short term. Because a lot of the time, if you focus on the short term, you can go into panic and scarcity mode. Hard thing to do. Yeah. Um, but I had opened that. And then years and years later, um, when I was married and had children, we went back to LA and we did a year when my kids were about, uh, what were they, seven and nine. And how was that phase? So that was, that was very different and, and, and lovely actually. Cause then I was with my husband. I had two kids. So you're going with a family unit, which is lovely. It's very, very comforting rather than being there at 23 and being very much on my <laughs> wandering own, around. wandering around and, and, and not knowing the city and not knowing really quite how to deal with it. And it's quite frightening and it's quite frightening as a 23 year old and mm. the world of producers and, um, yeah dodgy goings on and you know and parties and all that it's quite a lot to take on yes um and i it really makes me admire those young actresses especially who make it work from a very young age yeah and and understand it because i found it overwhelming mm. so to go back with my husband with my kids was so was monkeys who you are who you are <laughs> no no exactly yeah and that's lovely because it's really comforting and really really grounding um so it was great going back and we went for a year so we rented out our house in london we um have friends in la from before and and uh and they had found us a lovely place we found a beautiful school so we kind of set up home um, again, and having a school was great yes. because that anchors you. And you meet people. You and meet you're part people. Of the routine, yeah. Actually, as actors, and I hear it so often, it's the in between bits. It's the should I have coffee with I have, or I've got nothing in my diary today. Yeah. Or I don't really know where my life is going. You're just hanging about and waiting. Waiting. For the yeah. 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 And that's where you know. That's <laughs> out. Yeah, and that's that's where I'm actually. Having kids is no bad thing as an actor, and it, it's a it's a funny thing when you get to that stage and you're making those decisions. And I remember I was always told, "Whatever you do, don't do it; it will ruin your career." Um, and then finally, not listening to those people and going, "Well, I want to do it anyway, so I'm going to do it." And then actually going, "Well, it it, it grounds me, and um, and it gives me something that's greater and more important than the industry." And I think it's a hugely leveling thing to do and actually the career doesn't forget you you know if you're if you're still active and interested in what you do it doesn't let you go and I, I it didn't let me go and you um, bring different things to the table and you bring different things to the table of course you do because you're not just bringing a needy actor who wants to work um you're bringing well you know life at home is good so I'm here and I need to make it count and how yeah got and I um, remember, I don't know if I said this, but I remember when we were doing Living Under One Roof and I was in that, it was like my second job out of drama school and I was 21 and you, I think you had both boys at yes, that stage, I did. but I was just thinking, oh good, that is somebody who can do that, because in my head, right. I thought I would love to, I would love to have kids and it was very much in my plan but for some reason whatever is filtered down it was like a decision that like you have the children or you have the career yeah and yes. it and so watching you doing I was like oh there is somebody out there because I was thinking even three years before I never met an actor who I just who, who I had kids no or, or at all oh really. at all and I was like it was I was just like a young kid in Lincolnshire thinking I'd really like to make that my career but I don't really know how to do it. I'm going to go to drama school. But I didn't know anybody who was doing it. And so when I saw you, I was like, oh, okay, you can do it. And making that juggle work. And um, it was really refreshing. And it was so nice when I went to an audition the other day where I could do that for somebody else. Because yeah. this girl who was sort of 10 years younger, she was like, oh, but, well, it's kind of good that you can do that as well. Because I would sort of written it off. And I said, no, please no, don't. don't. So it was such a Full yeah, 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 yeah. Head. Good. Yeah. Well, it's really important then, isn't it? Yeah. That we're there and doing it. Right. 
I just assumed that nobody was watching. I mean, because they weren't, because I was, you know, I didn't, I, you know, it was only just getting started. Hi guys. And, you know, I just assumed <laughs> that it became much, much easier because I'm just, yeah. I'm just talking to myself. I'm just, you know, like howling into the abyss here. Um, and, and, and it was, you know, like I, so I cut my teeth doing it to a non-existent audience, which was really good. So there wasn't anyone to watch me doing it really, really badly. So I think that, you know, actually I'm really, really glad that I started off doing not the wrong thing, but just not quite the right thing. Yes. And I felt my way into it. Um, and, you know, and who knows, like in a year, my business probably will look very different to how it does now. But yeah. And I think that's okay. I think it's all right to just like go, oh, well, let's just stab at this, shall we, and see where we get to. Yeah. And how have you made like the quick progress that you have? What have, what have been the tools or techniques or, or mindset shifts that have just really helped you go, all right, let's do this? Actually, one of the most powerful ones um, was finding a uh, sort of hypnotherapist because um, I'd never, I worked with her, I worked with her. She, when I was sort of still doing kind of business and marketing coaching, she was my client and I worked with her because she, I was helping her transition a physical practice into an online business. Um, and she was like, oh, you know, if you ever want any hypnotherapy. And I was like, well, no, I'm all right, thanks. Because, you know, I'm not like scared of driving on the motorway or I don't need to give up smoking. Yeah. And then I was working on her copy with her on her website and I was like, hang on a minute, can you do this? And she was like, well, duh, yeah, that's what I do. Because it was all about, a lot, a lot of it was about sort of going from good to great and how mm. it, it was more to do with kind of, you know, um, confidence and competence and productivity and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, oh, hell, sign me up. I'm tick, tick, tick. Exactly. <laughs> and actually the beginning of it was just literally like using her, her using her MP3, which was something, so I've, I've literally listened to this every single night for over six months, like come hell or high water, drunk, Christmas day, you know, <laughs> I, I go to sleep with her in my, she, and she stayed, and she stayed at my house quite recently, which was really weird because I was listening to her on my headphones going, she's in my downstairs back bedroom. And she said, <laughs> then you kind of go, is it weird if I invite in her in bed. to do it live? <laughs> I know, she'll come and perch at the end of your bed. I was like, that's quite creepy. Yeah. So, so that, and, and, I, and then I, and then obviously working with her one-to-one and the thing that I found that was so useful was because once you start, you know, there's all the kind of neuroscience behind it, but once you start making those new neural pathways, um, about, um, you know, reinforcing positive behaviors, I found myself things getting moving much more quickly because I stopped second guessing myself yes and I just was like when you have that thing of like you're about to send an email and you just sit there for 10 minutes go mm. that and, went and even when you press send you have to look away exactly that went happen. that just you just because actually you know I've got a post-it note written on my wall that says what's the worst that can happen mm. and now I've also got a post-it note on my wall that says how hard can it be because really effing stupid people can do this <laughs> <laughs> which is not how to imagine um but so so working with her to kind of just actually have that um and we talk we talk a lot about moving you moving you through those states where you start you're un- unconsciously incompetent and then you're consciously incompetent co- like you know what you don't know you know that you're a blooming idiot and then you move through to that point where you're consciously competent which I kind of feel like I'm at, I'm at now like I know I know what I'm doing I know what I'm yeah. good at and obviously then, you know, in that moving into your zone of genius way, you get to being unconsciously competent. And that's when you're just like, like rocking it in your sleep. And, you know, that's, that's yeah. the holy grail to work with. But I did really, really find that massively helped um, with that mindset thing. And actually, you know, working with her on a one-to-one basis as well, it was actually, I thought it was just going to be like, you know, lying, I, I lie on the floor in my office and she sort of talks <laughs> to me and her nights. It's quite funny because she's a lot posher when she does hypnotherapy than when she actually talks to me. Oh, is she? <laughs> she's got her like posh voice. But but actually, it's, she she will make me go away and, and, and have implementable actions. And, and like I have to text her to tell her that I've done it. <gasps> yeah. And sometimes it's tempting to just to go, okay, well, my action is that I'm going to get up at 6.30 tomorrow just so that I can like, have to text her at 6 30 to- yeah or like I've just been in the shower I've done it <laughs> <laughs> this was stubborn motivation so that re- that really really helped 